Joining me today is Attorney General Lawrence Wasden. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we haven't heard much from you since the primary other than the regular business from your office, consumer protection, court cases. Um, I did want to ask you, how is the transition to the incoming Labrador administration going? First of all, let me take a personal moment and tell you thank you. Uh, you and I have known each other a long, long time. Uh, you are a tremendous reporter. Uh, you've always treated me with fairness and kindness, uh, been willing to challenge me uh, and ask me hard questions, and, but always been appropriate professional. So I wanted to say thank you to you. I appreciate that, thank you. And, thank you. and, and also the staff here, um, I've always been treated with respect and kindness, and I, I wanted to say thanks. Thank you. They're, they're a great crew. We're, yeah. we're proud of them. In terms of the transition, everything's going as we would ex expect, as, as it should be. And, um, you know, uh, it's not my, my style or my, my time to seek the limelight. You know, when you say it's going as we expect, is it going smoothly? Do you anticipate, in other words, any interruptions to things like consumer protection services or the functions of the Attorney General's office that affect Idahoans? We will perform our duties uh, to the end of our, to the end of my term, and then uh, that will be picked up by an incoming administration, and really that's up to them. I, I did want to ask you a couple more questions about the incoming administration. Um, you know, incoming Attorney General Raul Labrador is uh, reestablishing the Solicitor General position in that office. Um, what are your thoughts on this? In other words, you didn't have a Solicitor General in the Attorney General's office, uh, somebody who um, oversees challenges to the federal government um, or encroachments on state sovereignty. Why not? Well, we actually did have someone. We just didn't give him the title of Solicitor General. Brian Kane in my office oversaw all of those things. And so, uh, you know, the new administration wants someone with a title, and that's clearly the choice that they get to make. But it isn't that we were avoiding that. It's we did it. We just didn't want, think the title was necessary. You mentioned Brian Kane, mm -hmm. and he, of course, a few months ago uh, went on to a new position. Um, have more employees left than what we would normally see during a transition between administrations? Well, you know, I've been in office 20 years, so we haven't had a lot of those, so I don't know what the normal number is, but there have been a significant number of people who have left. I, I, I told folks this, that um, they've been very loyal to me. They have done exactly what I asked them to do. That was to call balls and strikes fairly and squarely. That they needed to make decisions that was best for them professionally and best for their families. And if uh, finding other employment was best for them, then they should do that and consider that as loyalty to me. And if they felt that staying was best for them professionally and for their families, they should consider that loyalty to me. So really it's, it's what they are seeking rather than what I am directing or seeking. Did any of the employees who quit cite the incoming administration as the reason that they quit? Well, uh, you know, I'm, they made the decision based upon what, what they felt was best for them and for their families. You know, I, I do have to ask, you served five terms as Idaho's Attorney General. Were you surprised with the results of the May primary? Um, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> you know, I was really tired. I'd, I'd been the Attorney General, I've been the Attorney General 20 years. That's a long time. And uh, I didn't really want to run. Uh, in fact, I'd made the decision not to run. And, uh, but then there were some folks who came to me and uh, both Republicans and Democrats and said, hey, you know, we, we really need you to, to do this one more time. And that took me a long time to come to that conclusion uh, that uh, I had, I, I was tired. Uh, it's a long, that's a long haul to carry at that load. As Attorney General, and the load never ends. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You, you have a, two, at least two cell phones on me at all times. Uh, you know, there was never a moment in, in 20 years that I haven't had phone calls, responsibilities, speeches, dis but most of all decisions to make. So I was tired. But I ran because um, I felt like we needed to um, 
give folks an opportunity to make a, a choice. They made that choice. We live in a, in a democratic society. When I, mean, when I say that, there's two kinds of democracy that I'm talking about. One is the direct democracy. We don't have that. We have representative democracy. Uh, folks get upset while well, we have a Republican form of government. Yes, it's a Republican form of government, but, there, but there's a small d democracy that we're talking about. And the answer is that the people get to make their choice, and they made their choice. And so for me, it was uh, I wanted to act in office from day one so that when my time was over, that I could look myself in the mirror and like what I saw. And, and I am satisfied with what we have done. You leave these positions in one of three ways. You can die, you can uh, quit, end, or you can get beat. That, that, that's the only three ways out of it. And the answer is, I really feel like I have served the people of the uh, state of Idaho being true to the rule of law throughout the entirety of my career. Looking back on that career, what are you most proud of? There are a couple things that I'm very proud of. One of them is uh, that we have saved children. Uh, just a couple of examples. We worked really hard on the safety of children on the internet. Just one example of that is uh, I was giving a presentation in Post Falls to a middle school, a junior high school, and a young girl, I think she was 13 years old, and she came up to us at the end of the presentation and said, I'm in contact with a man in Texas who's driving right now to Idaho to, to, meet, to meet her. And so we were able to get hold of her mother and the police chief. And about a week later, we got a call from the, I got a call from the police chief and he said, we got him. So, and that's not the only one of those we've had. We've had numerous events like that. So the fact that we're able to intercede in a way that informs parents and saves a child from a lifetime of victimization, that is a rewarding thing. That, that Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. Yes. Um, can, can you explain briefly for people who aren't familiar what it does and, and whether or not you know if that's going to continue in the next yeah. administration? Well, uh, the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force is a task force that is housed in my, in my office, but it includes law enforcement officers from across the state and also our federal partners. And we uh, target uh, child pornography. And why that's important is because every pornographic picture a child of a child is a picture of a crime scene. That's what it is. It is a child who is being sexually abused. And that is a picture of a crime scene. So consumers of that, you're consuming and creating a market for a child to be abused. And it's not just that, but it's also the physical abuse. Our, we don't have, uh, I don't know, we've done a statistical study, but by, the, by far and away, the large majority of persons who have and possess uh, child pornography are also physically abusing children. And so we can't turn away from that. We have to do something about that. And so on many occasions, we have been able to save a child. I, I had actually was talking to some media folks some time ago and spoke directly with the television station. And two weeks later, the head of the television station called me and said, "Hey, I have two sons who were contacted by someone who wanted se to sexually abuse them." I mean, that's the kind of stuff that is rewarding. We don't go out and make a big deal of it, but it is really the kind of rewarding things that that we've been able to do. One of the other things that I felt really comfortable with. Uh, that we were very successful, and that was the project with the media, and that was the uh, open meeting public records training, and the fact that I don't know that we'll ever be able to determine how many uh, fights we were able to avoid, but certainly we've been able to help quell some of those. So that's going to continue, but but to train uh, local government officers and the media and the public all at the same time, so that everybody's hearing the same uh, same uh, message, I think has been hugely successful. I know in, in my experience, so many of the open meeting violations and public records violations weren't f for malicious reasons. They right. were because people weren't familiar right. with the law on these on these right. small councils. Um, you know, you mentioned things that you're proud of. Is there anything you would have done differently? Yes, there is. Uh, early uh, in my first uh, f 
year of being the Attorney General, we proposed a bill to the legislature that was not a prop bill. It ultimately mm -hmm. was determined to be unconstitutional. Terrible mistake on my part. Unfortunately, what happened was I failed to read the bill. You know, you're drinking from a fire hose when you first come in the office. And someone says, hey, this is what we gotta do, okay. And I didn't take the time to read it. That never happened again. That was a, that was a mistake. That was something we did not do properly. You know, during your career, you were known for, as you put it, calling balls and strikes, not telling people what they wanted to hear, yeah. especially after I imagined that lesson, your first yes. term. Um, but, but what you thought was the correct constitutional interpretation, mm -hmm. um, that cost you some of your working relationships with lawmakers. Uh, I know that you had a long running fight with Governor Otter who ultimately endorsed your yeah. run, um, but, but would you have handled that, any of that? That, that actually cost me the primary election, to be honest with you. And that was the Texas versus Pennsylvania case. And the answer is I did what was right. I didn't do what was politically popular. I did what was right, what the Constitution required of me. I defended the federal, the federal system. I defended the state of Idaho and its sovereignty in that case. Lots of folks don't understand that. They are, you know, uh, acting on emotion or political agenda and without really understanding what really was at stake in that case. So that's a prime example of, as the Attorney General, you gotta call, call balls and strikes. You gotta call up, make the hard call, the one that's not easy, the one that's not popular. Uh, and that can be difficult. After the 2014 primary, I remember talking to you and you said that you know, the Republican Party is in a fight for its heart and soul. How's that fight going right now? Uh, that's a darn good question. And uh, I think the party has to figure out what it is and uh, where is its heart and its soul. Compared to eight years ago when we had that conversation, same trajectory, step forward, step back? Step to the side. Step to the side in your estimation. Um, you know, I, I do have to ask, um, what's next for you? That's a good question, don't entirely know. Uh, I'm not sure what I wanna be when I grow up. Uh, so uh, we've got a couple of irons in the fire and um, you know, not really at this point ready to talk about that. Uh, I do need to take some time to kind of um, sort of heal. I've had some health challenges over the last few months and pretty significant things and a lot of that is caused by stress and I need to kind of decompress a little bit. Are you doing okay? No, I'm all right. Okay. Uh, are you ruling out future runs for office? Uh, <clears throat> I learned long ago that you don't rule anything out. So I'm not saying I am, not saying I'm not, but you know, I, I honestly believe I've, I've put in my time in public service. I have, every one of us owes uh, our society something. I only think I've, I've, I've made my contribution. If you have any advice for the incoming Attorney General, and we have about two minutes left, what would that advice be? I wouldn't give him any advice. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, that would not be well received. And first of all, and secondly, I really think that's a choice for him to make. You know, I, I know that you say it wouldn't be well received, but I know that there's a long tradition with presidents who are leaving office, mm -hmm. whether or not they retired or were term limited out or lost, that they would write notes to mm -hmm. their, the people who were succeeding them. Um, are you sure it wouldn't be well received? I, I think that uh, we just ought to let that, uh, let that one ride. Uh, there's, you know, um, people have made their choice and we'll stand by the people's choice. If he has questions for you, are you going to pick up the phone and continue that relationship with him or after that primary is, is frankly the relationship too strained? Um, if he wants to pick up the phone and ask questions, he's most welcome to do so. One last question. Um, the state of Idaho is often involved in multiple court cases at any given time, you know, often challenging the federal government um, on multiple other issues. Are there any court cases that are currently in progress that might be affected by this transition? 
Well, there are a lot of cases that are currently in, pro in process. And can there be an effect? There can be. Um, what will that be? I have no idea. Uh, we litigate properly and we'll just see what happens. Any cases that come to mind in specific, or well, specifically? Well, there's, there's okay. a number of abortion cases that are currently before the Idaho Supreme Court and the Federal District Court, and they're high profile. Uh, for, I'm sure folks will be watching. Um, I don't know that there'll be any se severe change of direction. There may be, I, I, I don't know. All I know is that uh, we will, till, till the end of my term, we will litigate as we're supposed to. Have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for watching.